Hello! In this video, we're going to be creating some vector icons and then we're going to turn these icons into a 3D pattern all in Adobe Illustrator. So, let's get started. Matteo, so we have a new document and first of all, I'm going to select the rectangle tool. Next, click anywhere and hold shift to create a square. Make sure the fill is set to none and then increase the stroke weight. Let's thicken this up a little bit. There we go, very nice. Okay, one done. Next, let's select the ellipse tool and then click and drag to draw an ellipse. But just make sure you hold shift so you get that perfect circle. Okay, back over here again. Let's click and hold and this time select the polygon tool. And if you click anywhere on the artboard, you can specify the size and the number of sides. So we'll go for three and of course that gives us a triangle. And at this point, you can probably see where I'm going with this. So lastly, we're going to use the line segment tool to, well, draw a line, copy and paste in front to duplicate this. And then using the rotate tool whilst holding shift, just rotate this 90 degrees. And there we go, we have an X and four icons, PlayStation fanboy confirmed. Next, let's select everything. And then from the stroke panel, we can round off the cap and the corner just to remove those hard edges. Or you can leave them squared. Personal preference, totally up to you. Next, go to Object and select Expand. This will convert all of these strokes or outlines to regular shapes with a solid fill. And if we hop into Outline Mode with Command or Control Y, you can see the X is made up of two shapes. And if we click Unite here, it will combine these into a single shape. There we go, nice and tidy. And yeah, these icons are looking a bit wibbly wobbly, so let's just take a second to line these up and space them equally apart. Ah, there we go, much better. Now I'm going to select my first icon, double click the color picker and pick a color. And PlayStation folks, you know this is gonna be a pink. And I think something like this looks about right, well, more or less. And I'm just gonna take a second to now give the other three icons their own color as well. Okay, looking good. Now you can keep your icons 2D, but if you'd like to make them 3D, go to Window and select 3D and Materials. Let's dock this panel over here on the right and select my first shape. Again, lovely pink square. And I think for this, Extrude or Inflate would be the best options to try. And it's worth just playing around with both of these. You can see with Inflate, I can control the depth and the volume, and I can also inflate both sides. So I think in this example, I'm gonna go with this one. I'm just going to remember all of these settings and then apply these to the other shapes. Okay, now they're all equally inflated, I can click on a shape and I can rotate this freely by clicking that control point in the center and dragging around. So let's take a moment to just rotate all of these in weird and wonderful directions, trying to make all of them a little bit different. Now you don't have to do this next step, but you can get much better looking results with this, and that's click this drop down and turn on ray tracing. This will simulate realistic lighting and other things much more accurately. I'm gonna go for medium and click render. And the power of your computer will determine how long this rendering takes. And there you go, as you can see, these do look quite different than they did before. Now I'm just going to rotate the X slightly just to remove some of those highlights that were bouncing off the surface. And again, another optional step is to go to window and open up the symbols panel. Now what this enables us to do is drag each of these icons into the symbols panel. You can give them a name and click OK, and they are then added. So let's go ahead and add all of them. There we go. And now I can create new instances of these symbols. And if I make a change to one instance, it will be updated across all instances of that symbol. And as you can see, you can double click to go inside a symbol. Let's just say I had a hundred of this square. What you could do is go inside one, change the color. So let's change this to blue and then exit isolation mode from the top left corner. And you can see all instances of that symbol have been updated. Okay, let's undo that, remove this symbol and close down this panel. Now, another optional step that can help you avoid problems further down the line is to select each shape go to object and expand, expand this. However, if you try and resize this, well, first you'll have to wait like forever, of course. But once it's done, you'll see it's not scaled proportionally. So let's undo that. And again, go to object and select expand appearance. And now we've done that, you'll be able to scale this up and down and those proportions will be kept intact. Now there are some downsides to this in that you can't edit the 3D effect anymore and these will no longer be treated as symbols. So if you don't need to resize anything, you can skip this step. But if you do, here's your workaround. Right, now I'm going to scale these down holding shift and position them all vertically. And I'm going to space all of these a little bit apart just because I don't want them clustered together too much. Okay, now I'm going to select all of them and just make sure that these are aligned centrally and also equally spaced apart. And with them all still selected, I'm then going to go to object and down to pattern and select make. 
Okay, now we're in pattern mode. This pop-up just says that it's added this pattern as a swatch and you can customize all of the properties over here. And you can experiment with different tile types and offsets and see what you like. And for me, the boxes that make the biggest difference are the width and the height because I can manually push the icons further apart both horizontally and vertically. So something like this I think is looking pretty good. There's obviously a lot more settings as well and you can get a larger preview if you'd like to see more. And when you're happy, just click done. And remember this is a swatch. So if we go and create a regular old rectangle, we can actually apply this as a color and voila, our pattern is applied to the shape. And if you try and resize the shape, it will adjust the crop of your pattern. So let's just go ahead and resize this and maybe bring this in a pinch just so we don't have any half shapes. And once you've got a crop that you're happy with, go to Object and Expand, leave Fill selected and click OK. And now we can resize this and everything scales proportionally. Right, let's go and delete these four over here. And next, select the Rectangle tool, click anywhere and create a rectangle that is the same width and height as your artboard. And as you can see, it's applied that pattern by default, but we can give this a different color. Let's go with something a bit darker so it stands out and I'm going to send this to the back so it's behind the pattern and then center this on the artboard. And there we go, we've created some 3D icons and made this into a 3D pattern all in Adobe Illustrator. So hopefully you enjoyed this one and if you did, I've got a couple of videos on screen that I think you'll really enjoy. But as always, take care and I'll see you next time.